You guys are too kind. Thank you. So this is the overachieving 9 o'clock service that the pastors always brag about to all the other services. All right. All right. I see you guys. Um, so I got to tell you guys, you, you know, growing up and really even into my adulthood, um, the fruit of joy or joy period and fathering was not anything that was ever modeled to me. It was a completely foreign concept. Um, you know, childhood, adulthood. Um, let me just put it this way to give you guys a glimpse into my life. Um, I see Pastor Francis's book on father wounds, and I raise him a father-in-law wounds book. All right. And then um, if we could get a two-book deal, I'll even throw in spiritual father wounds book, okay, because I've had plenty of those. Um, so a little bit about me. I, I grew up in a pretty small family. It was just me, my mom and dad, and my six older siblings. Um, <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, I wasn't spoiled, and I, but don't worry, I, get him, I always get him back because I always tell him that God saved best for last. Yeah. All right. Um, so it is, you know, just a snapshot of what my dad was like and my relationship with my dad. It's basically two things that I can say. Um, he was very religious and super strict. And being the youngest of seven, you can imagine he was working tons and tons of hours to feed a, a pretty big family. Uh, and when he was home, it was his way or the highway, right? It was never like, yay, dad's home. It was, oh, God, dad's home. Okay, i got to get my stuff together. And, you know, growing up, that really left me uh, feeling neglected and feeling rejected. Um, and a lot of times that, that actually, you know, boiled over into my adulthood. Um, you know, with, when I was a kid, when I was probably 12, 13 years old, 14 years old, uh, I actually took some scissors. I went to my photo album. And I cut my dad's picture out of every single picture that I could find in my photo album. Uh, I just didn't want anything to do with him. I didn't want, you know, I, I didn't want him. I didn't want to be his kid. I, you know, it, it was pretty tough. And uh, as I got older, that that boiled over, and and I would have, you know, I'd <laughs> jump down my dad's throat every time we had any kind of conversations about God. And anytime he brought anything about up about God, I'd be like, No, Dad, that's not how it works. And I just jumped down his throat and. Uh, I'd do it in front of my kids. I didn't care who was, who was around, who was watching, who wasn't watching. Um, I'd just jump down his throat. And, and, uh, and God forbid my wife ever came to me and said, Honey, you know, it's, it's been six months or a couple years since we've seen your parents. Maybe we should go visit them. And uh, as Pastor Brandon was talking about um, throwing adult tantrums, I, I'd throw a bunch of adult tantrums. And my wife would be like, Okay, well, when you're done with all of that, we're going to be in the car waiting for you. <laughs> Come on down. Let's get in the car. We'll go see your parents. And everything be all right. And that, that really didn't, um, that really didn't help. Cause then after I'd go and my dad would say something, I'd flip out and we'd have an argument. And then on the way home, I would tell my wife, you see that, that was your fault. If you didn't make me go see my parents, none of that would have happened. Uh, and then one day, uh, you know, I, I gotta tell you guys, you know, my, um, I hear God pretty often and most of the time he sounds like my wife. Um, <laughs> And one day my wife pulls me aside and she says, hey, um, honey, I, I, know, I know you love your kids and I know you're such a great guy. And, and that's kind of dangerous when your wife pulls you aside and says, honey, I know you're a great guy and I love you. That's your, you know, you, you, it, you're in it. Um, she said, but you know, you, your, your kids are watching your life. And they see what you, they hear what you're saying, but they also see how you're treating your parents. And that weighs way more than anything else. And they're going to weigh the fruit of your, your life way more than the fruit of your lips. And I said, okay, okay, God, <laughs> you got my attention. And one of the reasons why that really got my attention was because I realized that I was being a hypocrite and God started showing me that I was being a hypocrite because I was demanding something of my dad's life that I wasn't willing to produce in my own life, right? Mm. And so I said, okay, God, how do we do this? And, and uh, I'll never forget, I went to God because I wanted him to help me resolve my dad issues. And he says, okay, I want you to learn to be a good son. And I said, por qué? Like, no, 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 God, you don't understand. It's not about me. It's about my dad. Like, help me help him, not help me help me. And so uh, he, he took me graciously to the Old Testament, to the commandments, and he showed me how it says, honor your father and your mother, period. He said, you realize that there's no little asterisk and then underneath it says, honor your father and mother unless, uh, in, in the words of Pastor Francis, they sucketh, <laughs> then you're off the hook. You're, you're all right. You don't have to worry about honoring them. You're just, you're all right. Just, just do your thing. Now, I will say that honoring your parents doesn't mean that you don't have boundaries. There's a big difference between honoring your parents and just, just being beat up for the rest of your life, right? 
And so I said, okay, God, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's, what does this look like? And so um, I, I'd go to my parents' house, and my dad would go off on one of his religious you know, rants, and God would say, I'm not interested in controlling what he's doing. I'm interested in controlling what you're doing. You got your response. Work on your response. And so in the beginning, it was really tough. I'd bite my tongue, and I'm like, oh, God, Dad, whatever. Okay, you know what? Let's just, just can we not talk about that? Um, and then as God started dealing with my heart and as, as I started loving my dad and, and as God started dealing with me and who I was as being a son, that completely started changing. And all of a sudden, my dad would go off on one of his rants and about how we're not saved because we're not having 100 kids. And um, instead of jumping down his throat, I'd say, okay, dad, listen, dad, I, I love you. And I, I just, I'm just here to, to be your son. And I, I'm just here to have a relationship with you as my dad. I'm not here to have church service. You did a great job the 18 years that I was at home. Let's just stop that. And long and behold, he, he did. Um, and you know what's crazy is that for the longest time, I had this burning question that would run through my head. Um, see, before my dad came to Christianity, he was an actor. He traveled all over. He put on these little shows and stuff. And I always wondered, I always thought inside of me, like, God, what would my dad look like if we could peel back the, the decades of religion off of his personality? You know, if he didn't lose his personality in, pr in pursuit of who you are. And, and as I started um, dealing with who I was, I, I started seeing my dad's even countenance changing and who he was started changing. You know, my dad never allowed us to participate in sports because as, as far as he was concerned, he's like, look, if, if God wanted you guys to do sports, it would have been recorded in the scriptures that Jesus was on a soccer team. <laughs> That's not in there. And so you guys aren't doing sports. And so it's either, you know, church or you're at home. Um. And, you know, what was, was awesome is that as he began to change and as he began to, he pulled me aside one day and he's like, hey, you know, are your kids in any sports? And I'm thinking there's some condemnation that's coming, right? And he's like, uh, no, 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 you know, I, I want them to be active and stuff. Is there anything that I can help with? I'm like, where's my dad and what did you do with him? Like, what's, <laughs> what's going on here? Um, and then he started, right, like, dancing wasn't allowed. And, you know, all of a sudden, my, I'd see my dad, like, shrugging his shoulders and stuff. Like, he's, you know, he's dancing and stuff. And I'm like, okay, this is crazy. And my relationship with him started changing in all kinds of different dynamics. And one day, God revealed to me, and what he, what he showed me was that my relationship with my dad was beginning to change. And the question that I always had of, I wonder what my dad would look like without all the religion, was actually being answered. And God was like, I'm rewarding you for getting on the operating table. I'm letting you see something that, and honestly, I thought that was something that I wouldn't see until heaven. I was like, okay, maybe, you know, if I get to heaven and hopefully my dad's there, you know, I'll actually see him for who he really was. And God was like, no, I'm letting you see what that's like here on earth. Just because you simply made the, the hard uh, decision to get on the operating table. And in my opinion, God redeemed my relationship with my dad simply because I got to a point where I valued the liberty of Christ over the heaviness of bitterness and unforgiveness. Yeah. Right. So I don't want to I don't want to hang on to that. Yeah. Now, the greatest the, the biggest revelation through this whole thing that I realized was that I can't produce the fruit of bitterness and the fruit of the spirit at the same time. Yeah. The, the word says in um, in Hebrews uh, 12, it says, watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grow up to trouble you or corrupting many or defiling many. That word uh, root actually is is like the sprouting up of something uh, or the growth of something. So it's basically fruit, right? And I realized that I couldn't hang on to the bitterness of who my dad was and, and keep producing the, the fruit, fruit of bitterness while I was waiting and trying to and hoping that I would produce the, the fruit of um, joy and goodness in my own life with my own kids. And that actually not only redeemed my relationship with my dad, all of a sudden my uh, interaction with my kids changed. Because one thing that I realized throughout the whole process was that I don't know a whole lot, and I don't need to pretend to know a whole lot. And people will always come up to me, and they're like, uh, you have such great kids. And I'm like, I know. And they're like, no, they're so awesome. They love God, and they're God-fearing, and they pray for people. And I'm like, I know. And they'll always usually follow that up with, like, what do you do? What's, what's the secret, right? What's the secret sauce? And I tell them, um, there's a lot to be said about knowing nothing about parenting and completely relying on the Holy Spirit. And since I no longer have to have this facade of like, oh, I know, I know what I'm doing and I have to keep, my, you know, my, keep it together, there's two things that I often tell my kids. One is, I don't know, did you ask the Holy Spirit? And the other one is I get to say sorry to them. Now, you have to understand that the culture that I grew up in, a father saying sorry to a kid was 
like a no-no. I mean, that was like death, right? Like they, I would, people would self-combust and like die and you know blow up into pieces. Um, and I and I get to say it all the time because I I. I I don't care enough about what's going on with me. And the truth of it is, is I want to be as vulnerable as I can with my kids. And I always say, you know, the, the, the freedom that, you know, transparency that I've experienced is like a, by, is a byproduct of the fruits of the spirit. You know, if the fruits of the spirit were apples, uh, transparency would be an apple pie, right? I love apple pies. Mm. Um, so not having, you know, not having to keep a facade on and being open has, has been super amazingly liberating for me and my kids. Um, the reason why is because I want my kids to know what their dad is like with Christ and outside of Christ. I mean, um, I want them to see me, you know, I, I want them to see me struggling with life and sin when I go lonely, Lone Ranger, and I want them to see the victory I gain in my life when I abide in Christ. And I honestly believe that the more they see me do the two, the more they see how wrecked I am outside of Christ and how, you know, how well things internally are when I'm with Christ, the more they're going to be, um, you know, drawn to a life that's surrendered to Christ, right? And they get to see my life like full access. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've had my kids pray over me and anoint, anoint, you know, anoint me with oil and, uh, and, and praying over me and seeing, you know, I, I even go to them with questions and I'm like, all right, we, we got to pray and we got to ask God about this because dad doesn't know what, you know, what's happening with this and what's going on with this. And I, I can tell you guys that, that, that the journey of my relationship with God, um, increasing my relationship with my dad, uh, being redeemed in my relationship, even with my kids benefiting, um, you know, all, all really started with me going to God and saying, okay, Lord, you're the, the master vine dresser, and I'm tired of consuming the poisonous fruit that my life is producing. Because the truth is we're going we're gonna to consume whatever fruit our hearts are, are producing, whether it's fruits of bitterness or the fruits of the spirit, right? Um, can I get an Amen. 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 Now, I'll tell you guys this. This is the awesome thing about the word amen. It actually means let it be so, which means God, do it again. And I can tell you guys that God is not a cruel God, that he would do something for one person and wouldn't allow it to be available for somebody else. And um, I just, uh, you know, as, as we progress, especially with Father's Day, I just want to say that, you know, this is a small snippet of what God's done and the redemptive work that he's done with me and my dad. And I'm fully convinced, fully, fully persuaded that it's also available to every single person that's in here that's willing to get on that operating table and say, okay, God, let's do this. Thank you, guys.